I often have to work on historical sources that need touch-up. This could be for documentaries or historical videos about a particular client. And we often get photos in our shop that are very damaged. Here you see a before and an after. The important thing I want you to realize is that to go from the before to the after only takes about 10 minutes. Now, I realize the first few times you do this, it will take you longer than 10 minutes. What I'd like to share with you is how relatively simple it is to go from a severely damaged photo to a high quality photo. It's all in how you approach the task. Let me go ahead and show you how I get from point A to point B and this will really impress and wow your clients if you can master these skills. I'm gonna go ahead and close this one out and let's go ahead and start. I'll reset my workspace Window, Workspace, Reset. I'm not going to use my History Palette, so I'll go ahead and close that. I'm also not going to use the Color Palette here, so I'll get rid of that. Now you see in the Layers Palette, we have several different layers. And this is because you'll find this image on your book's DVD. It ties to an exercise in the chapter. I go through and show you sort of a step-by-step -step healing which helps you find the proper approach for restoration. I'm going to throw these all away though right in front of you so you see that there is no trickery as I put this together. And away we go. The first technique to accomplishing this is to solve the major problems. Now when I ask folks what's the biggest problem with the image I'm amazed how many people comment on the contrast or the exposure. The major problem on this image are the holes, the fact that parts of the photo are simply missing. To fill those parts in, we need to take advantage of the clone stamp, shortcut for which is the letter S. If I use the left and right bracket keys, I can use to make my brush smaller or larger. And I'm going to use the right bracket key to jump that size up. Hold down the Option or the Alt key to set my target, click and then begin to clone. And we can use this to fill in major holes. You'll see though that the image is cloned from here to here, which is why this blemish here is repeated. That's okay, we'll get back to that. Option click and short gentle strokes to fill in. Don't be afraid to option or alt click several times to adjust your sample point. One of the best ways to avoid repetitive looking cloning is to resample a few times while cloning. We'll get those gaps filled in there. There we go. Now we got this area in down in the corner. Let's zoom in with the zoom tool, marquee around the area, take the rubber stamp tool, and I'm going to use a smaller brush, so left bracket to shrink it. Option click, and we'll fill that area in. There we go. Option click again or alt click on a PC. Change my sample point. Alt click. There we are. You notice I leave the navigator open very large. This way I could see my zoomed in image as well as a thumbnail of the entire image. And I can even move around in it. And to me it looks like we have filled in the first level of problems which was the gaping holes. Now, I think the next level of problems can be simply summarized as saying it's wrinkled and torn. We've got some gaps here that we need to take care of, as well as some blemishes through the top. This is where Photoshop's healing brush and patch tool come in. The healing brush is just like the rubber stamp tool in that it uses the same shortcuts to sample and paint. I can go ahead and click on it. Its keyboard shortcut is J and then we option click to set our target. Right bracket will make the brush bigger and I can now go over this blemish. When I release it blends together 
helping to better hide wrinkles and tears. Come in here and zoom a little. Peeling brush, option click, go right over that, and release. And it blends together. Option click, paint over, release, and it blends. Get a little bit more in there, and that looks pretty good. In this arm area here, it's going to be difficult to use the healing brush. Because if I click and start to paint, when I release, it does an okay job. But if you look closely, you see the seams pretty muddled. I'm going to go ahead and hit Command Z or Control Z to undo. For this sort of job, I prefer to use the smudge tool, which is located right here. Keyboard shortcut is R. The smudge tool supports blending modes, and I'm going to tell it to use the darken blending mode to push the dark pixels. And now I could simply push the dark pixels into the seam. And the key here is to try to follow the line or the pattern. You see there's wrinkles in the fabric and I try to follow those wrinkles to push this in. When I get to the edge, hold down the space bar to get the hand tool. And I follow the lines of clothing here to push this in. As we go forward, I just keep moving down that line, following the fabric, following the curves here. And as we keep along those curves, it's a lot easier to preserve the appearance that the fabric is uninterrupted. Let's move back up here. Follow the curve in the fabric. Get the folds. Push those together. And at that point, it's pretty good. I have this little blemish in here. And now I could take advantage of my healing brush. Nice tiny brush, option or alt click, and just gently go over that and let that blend together. And that is blended together nicely. Looking for any unsightly blemishes, there we go. Too much, undo, option click, drag, option click, drag. Frequent sampling in the appropriate luminance range there makes it very easy to hide that blemish. Little spot here on the hand, taken care of. Get this last little bit here in the fold, and that looks pretty good. Let's zoom out. 